Welcome to our channel, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us for the first time, allow me to request you to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and like our videos. And I won't forget those who support our channel, all the subscribers. I want to say thank you. Kindly continue supporting us. There is a lot of tension, uncertainty, anxiety between the Kenya Kwanza government and the Azimio fraternity. This is after it emerges that there is a likelihood that Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Molodinga could actually officiate a parallel Madaraka Day on first. Azimio is supposed to hold their parliamentary group meeting next week on Wednesday. And in fact, next week is going to form a beehive of uh, political serious activities. Because it is next week that parliament sitting will resume. And you all know that when it resumes, there are very significant bills to look at. One of them is the Ruto's maiden budget ever since he has assumed office. Their finance bill 2023, that is also the 3% that is supposed to be deducted from every government employee. And so next week is really going to be a very busy week in Kenya, political speaking. But Azimio is not a very happy lot and they want to protest several things against this government. And in the parliamentary group meeting, they are going to hold this meeting in Jaramogi Ginko Dinga Foundation on 30th Tuesday. And it's emerging that Uhuru Kenyatta and Rila Molodinga are going to co-chair this meeting. And this is a really heated meeting because there are serious matters to be debated. Much of the debate is going to circulate around this government, how it carries itself, because the Zemir government claims that Mr. Ruto's administration is taking them for granted, is taking Kenyans for a ride, and is ruling, is exercising unilateral decisions that are meant to hoodwink and to be very injurious to Kenyans. One of the things that forms their agenda is what they call an attempted coup at Jubilee Party. You will know that there has been a lot of drama between the group that supports William Samoy Ruto and the group that subscribes to Uhuru Kenyatta. Kanini Kega led group are being supported by the government and have also realized that they are also being supported by the Registrar of Political Parties. That office led by Madame Anne Ritu is actually supporting the Oster of the officials that are allied to Uhuru Kenyatta. The other day, when they sat in a, a meeting, they kicked out Jeremiah Kionis, the current treasurer. They also kicked out the vice chair, David Murade. But they had been instructed to iron out their issues and their differences in a national delegates conference meeting. And when Uhuru Kenyatta called for this meeting, but lines had already been drawn and so they passed resolutions that they wanted to kick out rebels the kanini kega group the adan kenan and uh, sabina chege after passing this resolution when they took their minutes to the register of political parties office instead of ratifying what they had passed in their National Delegates Conference, Madam Anderitu issued them with another uh, letter acknowledging an earlier meeting that Kanini Kegan, the group, had passed a resolution also to kick out the officials who are allied to Uru Kenyatta. And with this, as the is reading mischief, and they are saying that if this does not stop, they might go to the street. So this is going to form part 
of the agenda because Uhuru Kenyatta is actually building fire. He had announced that some people are trying to cajole and intimidate him to relinquish his position as the Jubilee Party leader and to abandon national politics. And he made it very clear that he was contemplating retiring from active politics. But he said that the manner in which the government is trying to coerce him out of politics is one that he will not accept. And he said that the battle has just begun. So Azimio is going to discuss this because they feel this is tantamount to undermining democracy. They say William Ruto is speaking from both sides of the mouth. One, William Ruto claims that he wants a stronger opposition, but at the same time, he is killing the opposition, cutting off all the branches of Azimio to ensure that Raila remains a skeleton, but this has proved to be very difficult. So it's going to form part of the meeting at Jeremugo Gingo Dinga Foundation. And uh, they are also going to discuss the stalled and suspension of the bipartisan talks. The Azimio group that was holding the bipartisan talks rejected those talks and said that they were citing lack of seriousness from the Kenya Kwanzaa side because they're saying that they are talking about party hoping they don't understand why William Ruto is buying off their members yet at the same time they want to discuss issues to do to do with party hoping they are demanding that if a member of parliament ditches a party that elected him or her into office then he or she must resign and seek fresh mandate and remember that tuesday marks the seven day ultimatum that the azimio had given to kenya kwanza they walked out of the meeting said that they were giving the kenya kwanza team a seven day ultimatum to relook and rethink whether they are serious to go on with the talks so tuesday coincides with this from reliable sources they might just go back to the streets to compel the government to do what they want now what is even adding salt to injury is the fact that a few days just two days after the meeting on first there will be a Madaraka Day celebration that has been taken to Embu by the national government. And William Ruto is going to officiate that and preside over it together with Rigedi Shagwa. But tension is rising because there is a likelihood that Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Muludinga might just hold another parallel Madaraka Day celebration. Remember the one that they wanted to hold, yeah, the, the parallel Jamhuri celebrations in Jakaranda that was thwarted, that was thwarted after Raila Odinga was invited to Washington, D.C. Things have changed. And uh, if these resolutions will be passed on Tuesday, then the Azimio Fraternity wants to form their own parallel Madaraka Day celebration. This is going to be very humiliating. I don't know whether the government will accept it. Sources say that to counter this move, the government has moved very fast and they have invited, officially invited the former president, Huru Kenyatta, to attend the Madaraka celebrations because they foresee a very shameful situation where the former prime minister and the immediate former president will be organizing and presiding over a parallel uh, Madaraka celebration and sources indicate that if they make good their threat the government is going to suffer humiliation remember every time William Ruto organizes for a rally whether it is a, a, an interdenominational interdenominational prayer or something he has to ferry people using school buses but Raila Mulodinga has the bragging right of calling people for a meeting and they will be coming voluntarily this meeting is going to really, if it's juxtaposed, it's going to show the government that the Azimio fraternity has the numbers and they've got the people. One thing that must not be forgotten 
is that it's coming against a backdrop of the high cost of living that is really threatening to separate the hustlers, to make them serve ties with the government that they really voted for. It's very scary in the eyes of the international community, in the eyes of Kenyans, that the screen, Kenyan screens will be divided in the middle so that one side will be showing William Ruta and Rigedi Geshagwa presiding over a murder day. And on the other side, Railo Dinka and Uhuru Kenyatta will be up together with all the other as the mere leaders, people like Martha Karua, will be presiding over another Madarakade celebration. So this is really scaring them, and they're doing everything to avert this. And sources indicate that there is pressure from Azimio to compel Uhuru Kenyatta to attend this parallel Madaraka celebration because they are saying that they are helping Uhuru Kenyatta to salvage Jubilee because Jubilee is under attack and a direct onslaught from the government because they want to frustrate Uhuru, they want to check Jubilee from him. But there's that national outlook and international outlook where Uhuru Kenyatta is being seen as an international leader. He's holding peacekeeping in, in, in Congo and uh, the government side is telling him that he should uh, portray an image of an international leader and reject the calls for Azimio to hold a parallel Madaraka celebration. The other thing that is coming out very clearly is that Parliament is resuming next week. And with that, it goes without saying that they are going to discuss the budget. Under this budget, the government is also introducing a 16% VAT on fuel. That bill is pending in Parliament because it was introduced by the, by the majority leader in the National Assembly, Mr. Kimani Chungwa, and being supported very strongly by the, the leader of the budget, Mr. Ndindi Nyoro. Even though they had rejected this bill sometimes back in the previous regime, they have come back and made a U-turn, and they now see something good about this bill. This bill has been rejected by Kenyans, because when you increase taxes on fuel, you are increasing the prices of all the basic commodities because this will directly impact on the cost of production the cost of trans transportation so that when the cost of production goes higher and the cost of transportation also goes higher the manufacturers will always transfer these expenses to the consumer and life will continue even to be more difficult Already the prices of uh, sugar have gone higher even before this bill is passed. And so the Azimio have decided that they want to thwart this bill. Number one, they have decided that they're going to craft a parallel bill that will poke holes and show weaknesses in the Ruto bill, the, 20, the, 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 the finance bill 2023. And so they want to, to have a parallel uh, bill that will be friendly to Kenyans, a bill that they describe as pocket friendly. The other thing, they are urging Kenyans to look very clearly at those who will be passing this bill because it lies entirely in the hands of the members of parliament. And as Amio is said, that they will be pushing for what we call a public voting, leave alone the secret voting. They are pushing for the one where MPs will be, names will be called and you go in front and you declare whether you support or oppose this bill in the full glare of, of the cameras where all Kenyans will see whether you support this bill or oppose it so that they pit the members of parliament against the electorate. So they are saying that if your member of parliament will pass this bill, then you know who is killing you. That is one thing that is coming out. But the other one that is also coming up, that is also scaring the government, is that there is a possibility that they are going to discuss secession. Remember, the, the, the Azimi fraternity has tried everything within their reach. And it's being said that as a last resort measure, because all these measures are geared towards giving a remedy against Ruto's actions that they feel are meant to undermine democracy 
and to bring down the cost of living. And so they're saying that one of the things that they want to discuss is secession, where they will say that if William Ruto insists that he cannot even open the servers to know who won, then they want to secede, to go for a referendum, so that those, the Zimu supporters, can have their own nation. And those who are supporting Rigedi Geshegu and William Ruto will remain with the other part of the nation. But this has a process. It has, go to the, it has to go to the United Nations to discuss it and then revert it back. I don't think they will accept. The Commonwealth and the United Nations will not accept because this, they, are the, they are part and parcel of election rigging that gave William Ruto his win. But then sometimes when the country is in turmoil, they will accept it. It has, ha it has happened before. Even uh, Southern Sudan did separate from the Northern Sudan. So this is something that they're going to discuss and it is really giving the Kenyakwanza team a lot of tension because if you don't agree that we won these elections and you won, you mean, you, 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 you believe that you won your elections and in a country which is divided, Raila Moldinga believes that he has 8 million votes if you don't count those who never voted. But William Ruto insists that he won these elections fair and square. So this parliamentary group meeting is going to discuss very serious issues, touchy and very delicate issues. If the resolutions are passed, ladies and gentlemen, then we are looking at a very precarious situation where people are going for secession if they pass it. People are going for a parallel Jamhuri celebration and who is leading this? An immediate former president, William Ruto has decided to rattle a snake and it is really going to bite him. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to submit to you that this is going to be very humiliating to William Ruto. And if William Ruto is not careful, if he continues to joke around with Kenyans and the prices of basic commodities are going high, then he will soon see all Kenyans waking up to demand for cheap unga that he talked about. Let us wait and see what happens ladies and gentlemen, but things are not looking good. That is my take.